Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of you for today's session. Uh, students, just let me know whether you people can hear me. During the session, you have to, all of you have to communicate with me over here during the, in the chat box. Now, please let me know, can you hear me? Tell me, please. Yeah, great, great. So let us start. Students, advanced audit and assurance. This subject of ACCA, it has relationship with your previous subject of FH. and SBR, P2, P2. So students, these two subjects, they form the basis of P7, Advanced Audit and Assurance. They form the basis of it. Now, students means that the knowledge from basic knowledge of auditing from here and IFRS knowledge. Now, I realize and I know that while coming to study for P7 paper, students usually they have forgotten what they studied in F8. They forgot. So, need not to be worried about it. Whatever is there, whatever you have studied there we will be revising over there all the necessary knowledge all the necessary knowledge now so what about ifrs students you need to start revising your ifrs knowledge because audit or accounting standard knowledge is of prime importance in p7 paper let us proceed further P7 paper, Advanced Audit and Assurance, it has major two sections. Major two sections we can classify. One is audit of historical financial statements. Audit of historical financial statement. And the second is other areas. So audit of historical financial statement, this starts with the audit acceptance, audit planning and risk assessment, audit evidence, and review and report students this audit of historical financial statement which is actually based on your previous knowledge but again i as i have said that we will be studying it afresh we'll be studying it afresh now remember this area, planning and risk assessment, on this 24 marks uh, on average. It is tested in every exam on average. Around 20 marks average on average, it is tested audit evidence. Maybe from 20 to 30 even sometimes on average 20 marks now the next is review and report on average 10 marks but up to 15 marks it is tested in your every paper so you can see here around 60 
marks paper is in front of you so but if you see the past exam papers you will find these areas from 60 to 70 marks in each paper in each paper now next other areas we can classify other areas further into two subtypes one is audit of uh, sorry uh, the other is that is regulatory environment for audit and in that we study further uh, that is audit quality codes of ethics and practice management one area on average from this area not it is not tested in every exam these areas are tested in every exam remember so but but it is not necessary but you find commonly 10 to 15 mark question from this area 10 to 15 marks and the last one and the last one and the last one now the last area that is other assignments other assignments and in it we study due diligence we study forensic audit we study prospective financial information we study over here audit of performance information of public sector performance information of public sector so students these are different what we call it areas of your p7 paper and again on it you will find on average 15 mark part 10 to 15 sometime it's sometime sometime in rare cases it may be of 20. so this is your whole syllabus of p7 and one yes one topic uh, i have missed in it which is environmental audit social and environmental audit social and environmental audit now next so this is the whole syllabus and let us talk about your exam structure let us talk about your exam structure your exam structure is like that that there is the section a a big case study section a has question number one a long case study in which normally what are the areas audit planning risk assessment it is must one question is must from here plus other parts maybe maybe 
audit procedures, maybe ethics or any other part. Section B. Question number two. Audit report or review question plus any other area. Question number three. Other assignments plus other assignments. Yes. plus any other area. So this is your paper, P7 exam paper, which you are going to face in your paper, final exam. So you see, it is quite clear which areas are going to be tested and where they are going to be tested, quite clear. That's why I usually say your 70 marks, 70 to 80 mark paper is predictable quite predictable and that is quite easy to handle if you if you have prepared for it of course now let us proceed further let us proceed further students any question so far you need to please there is a limitation in online class i have switched off your mic deliberately why because the background noise of everyone now will create distortion in my lecture. And of course, you will not be able to understand that then because noise will come from multiple sources. No, no new section. No new section. No new section. Exam structure? No. Okay, now, next. Only two sections so far, okay, now. Yes, please, any, is it clear so far? You need to communicate with me in the chat box. Okay, feel, because communication is a two-way process. At least you should respond, write one word or two word when I am asking you people so that I can be satisfied before I proceed further. So, uh, is it clear so far? Tell me please. Yes, or any question? Tell me please. Okay, now, students, one more thing, one more thing, please, I say, I'm saying it with quite focusing on it, emphasizing it, that when I'm writing something in the class, Yes, please. Students, if you are noting down something during the lecture and I shift to the other page, please frankly tell me to stay on the same page or go back to the previous page. I will be happily doing it. So there are some limitations of online class. Of course, we have to keep that in mind. and we and please do not feel shy at all. Is it clear what I'm saying, please? Tell me, is it clear? Good. Now, 
Thank you. These are generic questions. Recording and etc. Of course, I will answer it, but this is not the right place. Okay, so we are we should focus on the lecture right now. Of course, I will answer it. You can ask the way WhatsApp. That's such question. Okay. Now. Next. Students, advanced audit and assurance. Or P7. <laughs> you are right. There are such minor changes. There, there are such minor changes. I will talk about those, of course. When the in the first class, where students are going to study P7 first time. You know, there is a question to me. Let me tell everyone that there are some changes to the syllabus in P7. There are some changes. So what I am telling you people that not so much changes. And you know, I cannot tell the first day, the last point that what is new. Got it. So we have to move from the stepwise. Okay, now. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So advanced audit and assurance or P7 paper. This subject, the first area we are going to start is that is the regulatory environment for audits. So before I start it, students, you will be provided with the notes covering the whole syllabus and with the practice questions as well means you need not you need not to buy any exam kit or anything else in addition to it and we'll be following our notes we'll be following our notes for the subject yes just a minute please let me open the handout before i proceed Now, so advanced audit and assurance. So in the notes I have included, financial report, this is the examiner article, which is telling how IFRS, how IFRS are important. Now, Now, next. So, students, <clears throat> regulatory environment for audits. So, this is the first section. Now, how the auditor is regulated? And first, first question is, why auditor is regulated? Why to regulate audit? Yes, my question from you. Why to regulate? Yes. Audit or auditor, tell me please, why to regulate? What do you think? Yes, please. Why to regulate audit? What do you think? <clears throat> yes. Instead of writing answer to privately to me, kindly send it to all so that everyone can be participate in the discussion. Okay, so that everyone can part to participate, can read your answer. Yes. Now. 
all right exactly exactly regulation of audit is required to ensure that auditor works appropriately and the audit report issued by them are appropriate audit reports issued by them are appropriate so that and what is the purpose so that stakeholders of the company are not misguided because they are relying on the reports of auditor they are relying on the reports of auditor they are relying on the reports of the auditor now so this is the purpose so auditor when we say international regulation so intern the auditor is regulation regulation of audit is done one is national law national level and international level as well so at the national level the country in which you are operating the country in which you are operating so national laws and regulations laws and regulations are there who control auditor who guide auditor who tell eligibility criteria for auditor that who can act as auditor national laws and regulation tell how to perform work national laws and regulation tell so national laws and regulations are there they actually yes guide now next so students international internationally there is an organization ifac international federation of accountants international federation of accountants this organization is basically body of international accountancy bodies all the accountancy bodies like acca icaw and others they are member of it they are member of it yes international bodies and this ifac regulates auditor as well for example ifac has number of sub committees one subcommittee is iaasb international audit and assurance standards board iaasb this international audit and assurance standards board basically what does it do it issues standards standards yes like that it has issued isas international standards on auditing
what what isas are they are the guidelines to conduct audit that how to conduct an audit guidelines isas if they have issued secondly they have issued they have issued secondly isqcs international standards on quality control isqcs international standards on quality control they are standards basically to ensure quality of audit and these both are part of our p7 syllabus up to some extent and we have to study both isas as well as isqcs up to some extent they both are part of our syllabus now now next second is that is iesba international ethics standard boards standards board for accountants for accountants another subcommittee it has issued codes of ethics codes of ethics it has issued code, codes of ethics it has issued codes of ethics now next and student in between there is another subcommittee there is another subcommittee the name is piob public interest oversight board it is again subcommittee of ifac what does it do it basically nominates the members of standard setting bodies now you see this is standard setting this is standard setting body so their members are nominated by public interest oversight board now students come back to the up till now is it clear to everyone any question so far please do let me know is it clear so far any question please yes please good now let us proceed further so national laws and regulations we will talk about it further so i told you that they decide eligibility criteria that who can act as auditor who can act as auditor the national laws and regulation decide furthermore let us talk about uk 
because acc is from uk so some discussion is there in the uk there is, there are some bodies who actually regulate audit profession for example public oversight board is there public oversight board in uk there is auditing practice board in uk auditing practice board apb apb yes this is pob and there is financial reporting council frc in the uk these are the three bodies which 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 actually oversee and which manage the overall different aspects of auditor's work yes these are the bodies now in the uk these are in the uk now so we have gone through that how auditor is being regulated and why it is being regulated now there is a further aspect of laws and regulations that is no no the i i typically said i specifically said you see when i started i said there is one international level and one is national level okay so so one is regulation of audit how auditor is regulated so internationally i have discussed one side okay so basically what is the idea this is an auditor no you don't no. okay you are talking about virgin so just three names are there no need not to memorize it okay need not to memorize it just for the sake of example i told you that what are the bodies you need not to memorize these bodies name okay just to give an example i have named is it clear the person with the name dell pc <laughs> is it clear okay now now next so next is regulation of audit when we talk about so an important name is an important source is that is audit committee they also regulate up to some extent to the auditor they control monitor what is audit committee we know that audit committee is basically it is sub committee of board of directors of any company and actually what do they do what do they do they basically audit committee first of all members okay they are normally at least three members and all are non executive directors and one of them must be finance expert one of them must be finance expert now so when we talk about audit committee students remember it administer it manages it control it supervises multiple aspect of auditor work for example what do they do they nominate auditor external auditor ea external auditor nominate 
who will be the nominate not a point in sometimes small companies even they point as well they nominate external auditor secondly that is secondly that is they determine scope of auditor scope of work for auditor scope of work for auditor that what will be the area of work which areas of financial statements needs to be audited determine the scope and of course very much important they observe and help to maintain independence of auditor so uh, when you are enrolled during the coming year i will share the notes with you and of course then i will not need to write too much okay so simply i will be giving explanation since it is the first class so i am i need to write these things because you don't have notes so independence the auditor is independent from all the pressure all the any influence of the management of the company or any other party yes they observe and shows auditor has access to all record of company which which they need to audit whatever they need they ensure so these are the things actually you see here they are basically working related to the external auditor now let us proceed further yes next topic is money laundering here it is again it is laws and regulations which are regulating auditor it is related to that so money laundering students very important topic has been tested two or three times in the past paper so money laundering what is it money laundering is a process it is a process where you conceal the true origin and ownership of means you collect money from crime in the form of bribe money from the drug selling or from any criminal activity you collect money but because you have involved raised that money through a criminal activity which is which was from that money is black money so just want to hide the source of that money you want to convert that black money into white money you want to do that and when you want to do that so the whole process through which black money is converted into white money that is called money laundering so it is an attempt process by which criminal attempt to so you want to conceal the origin origin means the source original source you want to manipulate that you want to cover up that and you want to show like that it is money which is coming from legitimate source legal source so that is called money laundering so this whole process there are three stages of money laundering three stages placement layering and integration so you see here it is attempt to conceal the origin of dirty money by making it to look legitimate or clean that is the whole process this is called money laundering so three step process placement layering and integration three step process so before you know that 
discussing this diagram a very a very common example which is used in the businesses to those businesses which do money laundering right a very common example is that a person who has criminal money for example for example uh, you are uh, their customer and they're selling a product for 1000 rupees this is the price they are charging so they are receiving 1000 rupees for one unit of that product but they are recording 2500 rupees record is being maintained per unit that they have sold so you see 1500 rupees additional customer is paying them 1000 they are receiving 1000 from the customer but recording 2500 different 1500 they are putting that into business from the money which is criminal act from the from the criminal activity so by, so 1500 per unit if they sell during the year for example 1000 units you just can imagine so how much it will be yes 1.5 million they have converted into legal money so you see here in this way this is this is the common common way now so placement so an old way again old-fashioned that placement that you collect dirty money and you deposit that placement is the stage where money illegal money enters into legal system for the first time enters into legal system for the first time so deposit into the bank just like that collect that recording 2500 is placement now second is layering once it's entered now you create layers of transaction multiple transaction to confuse the record to make it not traceable like that transfer to the bank or another bank account wire transfers offshore banks loans payment of false invoices you know you are doing multiple transactions you deposit into one bank transfer it to the other withdraw from the third then deposit you know multiple layers you are so there are certain symptoms of money laundering we will talk about that and then is integration what is integration this is the stage where after layering now you say now this is legal money now i will purchase asset i will make investment yes luxurious life so three stages complete so that is a three step process money laundering so then there are symptoms of money laundering yes indicators what are the indicators if the company is using excessive wire transactions excessive wire time you know excessive remember the word excessive is very important more than normal abnormally high company deposits 1 million in one account and then immediately transfer to another account a pattern the amount is deposited in one account and transfer to the other company issues bearer check bearer open check cash so when you issue bearer check every one of you must have the knowledge of bearer check do you know it what is a bearer check tell me please what is a bearer check do you know it okay bearer check is that one is cross check yes one is cross check cross check is which is just 
has to be deposited in your account. You cannot get it and cash at counter. Bearer check is that if check is issued to you, you can take it. This is that check which you go to the bank bank and they pay you cash. It is called bearer check. Cross check is which is so when so bearer check is normally not traceable. That to whom you have paid, why you have paid. So ambiguity, large currency or bearer instruments. And then they say repeated deposits or withdrawals just below the monitoring threshold. What is monitoring threshold? This is the limit. Amount, for example, 500,000 rupees. These are the transaction above which they are automatically selected for monitoring or audit by central bank, by central bank of the country, state bank. So what they are doing, money launderer, they know this limit. They are doing transaction 495,000. So that they are not selected for audit. Repeat it. The deposit withdraw, deposit withdraw. But below monitoring threshold, they are smart, of course. And then secrecy, no documentation. When you go to them and you say, okay, what is the reason for this transaction? They don't tell you. They become offensive. They say, no, card not available. Secrecy, secrecy. And the next is cash-based business, high risk. You know, when you have cash-based business, you can manipulate it. You can manipulate the reasons of having cash. You can mold it in the direction you want. So they prefer it. Because to create confusion is easy now when you have cash based business. Students, the next point is that is secrecy. Secrecy means, dear, it means secrecy means that when you ask them the reason for a transaction, they don't tell you. They don't maintain supporting even vouchers. If you are working in the accounts, you know, vouchers are there for payment of cash, which explain the reasons why it is being paid, to whom it is paid, the reason for it. Sometimes vouchers are there blank without explanation. When you ask them to whom you have paid, why you have paid, they say, we are not supposed to tell you. Possibility is there. This is called secrecy. They want to hide something. Because they are doing something wrong. Is it clear? Secrecy. So it is if there is secrecy, it means there is indication that it might be, it might be, yes. Because of now, uh, because of something wrong which is going on over there. Now, criminal offense in the UK. What are the criminal offense? Possessing, dealing, or concealing. Yes. The person who is involved in the assisting or convincing anybody that do money laundering, even that person is also involved in money laundering. Now, students, it is the law which is related to the auditor. We are because we are supposed to be auditor, for example, as we are because we are studying it. So, if we face any suspicious circumstances, which which are suspicious, you see, not we are not saying it is money laundering. 
we get suspicion we are auditing and we get suspicious this company is involved in money laundering we must have to disclose that suspicion to authority but if we, if we don't report that suspicion we will be tried also under the money laundering crime you see how hard is the duty that this is the reason we are studying it this point because we are studying regulation of audit so this is which is related to auditor most importantly now so so we, so wherever we have we just even suspicion has to be reported no matter later it proved to be wrong but if we get suspicion we must have to report it and the next is tipping off money laundering reporting officer who is it mlro means money laundering reporting officer it is officer of organization which has specialized knowledge of money laundering and the laws tipping off tipping off what is tip off tip off is that if i uh, i find if i find an organization a person is involved in money laundering i give them a hint directly or indirectly that be careful you can be investigated or you are being investigated so this is got tip off so by of course when i will say them directly means that i i give them directly directly means i tell them be careful what is indirectly in that is that i if i keep questioning them again and again about a matter in a way that they are themselves get alerted it is again tip off i have to be careful about it as well my direct behavior or indirect indirect means that my excessive questioning excessive investigation about a matter they may get alert about that and hence they may take action they may manipulate record to prejudice an investigation if i do this this is crime and the last one is when they get information that they are going to be investigated they falsify conceal or destroy documents it is again crime now the next is money laundering procedures anti money laundering procedures remember it has been tested in one of the past paper it has been tested so you even it has been tested in this way it by the way it is written uk money laundering regulation but in exam you just cross it they ask what are the anti money laundering procedures which which should be used by organizations if they don't mention 2007 uk law still they are same still they are same so the first of all is appoint a money laundering reporting officer i have told you what who is that person who is that person a person who has expert knowledge of money laundering and relevant procedure and laws and regulations that is called mlro second but whenever the company is engaged to any other person they should perform customer due diligence anyone work out of you working in bank tell me anyone out of you is there anyone who is working in the bank yes please no one okay you have go, you go to the bank for account bank ask you provide the proof of source of income bring some employer's letter bring some your nic means national identity card 
and instant similar things being asked for the same right so best basically banks bank says okay why you are opening the bank account okay so what is your uh you know that uh they they ask sometimes they ask you to bring utility bills of your home as well residents so actually they this is called due diligence they want to verify you they want to know you before they get engaged with you i think all of you may, will be having bank accounts and the, may have gone through all this process so customers due diligence know your client this is explained here yet the organization you are going to engage with know them what is their business what are the managers what are the owners what are source of funds what is the source of business what are the business types so actually knowing all that there is a purpose to spot any unusual business activity if there is any and hence identifying any suspicion so you know there were some uh, it happened with me i was back in mauritius uh, in 2015 it happened with me that uh, mcb i have bank accounts i'm their customer over there so there was some amount two three months repeatedly deposited in my account cash deposited so the bank uh, i went to a bank for a visit of some for some information the officer asked me that why the same amount you are two three months you are getting what is the source so i explained that person of course and that person officer said it's okay so basic basically this is this was the purpose okay so now so now report suspicion of money laundering yes and maintain record of the customer at least for five years at least five year once you have engaged with the customer five year at least you have to maintain record and then train all staff staff your team member your employees to guide them about my laundry and tell them you have you must have make a form documents to be attached things to do you you know that these are the procedure in the organization to compliance with the regulation is it bring these documents these five six seven attach these fill this form attach your photograph scan your thumb impression so these are internal procedures to ensure they say we will send you a letter at your place procedure to verify customer so anti money laundering procedures i hope it is clear to you people is it clear students so far is it clear anyone any question please tell me frankly so just here is a past paper question june 2012 it was discuss the implications of circumstances described in the audit seniors note D explain the nature of any reporting that should take place by the audit senior three marks students take five minutes read the question again implication and any reporting take five minutes read this scenario then i will solve it for you 
प्लीज रीड दिस सैनारियो Yes, I hope you have gone through this question. I hope you have gone through this question. Have you gone through it? All of you? Tell me, please. Good. 
Good. All right. Now, you see here, the question is that you are a manager in the Lark and Company responsible for audit of Heron Company, an owner-managed business which operates a chain of bars and restaurants. This is your firm's first year auditing the client. An audit for the year ended 31st March 2012 is underway. The audit senior sends a note for your attention. When I was auditing revenue, I noticed something strange. Hen company's revenue, which is almost entirely cash based, which is almost entirely cash based. You see here, the first factor is recognized at 5.5 million in the financial statement revenue is recognized at it however the accounting system shows that till received for cash paid by customer is 3.5 so cash based means it is risky open to manipulation it is high risky in this regard so 3.5 million and 5.5 million so 2.2 million dollar difference between what is recorded in the financial statement and what is what the tills cash tills cash counters you know till machine all of you know if you go to Shoprite or intermart or uh you know jumbo etc you, you see the cashier are using the machines they're called till machines their record is showing sale of 3.5 million dollar this seemed odd so i questioned Avagil. Avagul, the financial controller about it, this. She said that Jack Heron, the owner man, deal with the cash receipt and post three journal. So odd accounting, posting through journal instead of post, posting through cash book and routine accounting cycle. So it is another indication that there is they are is this odd accounting it is indication that something wrong is going on so when you ask the reason he refused to they are not cooperating and this stage when they are recording entry in the book for 5.5 million this seems to be placement stage yes they they basically they communicated they started money laundering they started money laundering now so students so 3.5 million and 2 million 2 million dollar now so while auditing cash I notice a payment of two million made by electronic transfer. This stage e transfer is like layering, they are sending it to internationally, and the same person is authorizing that. It adds to the it adds to the suspicion that the same person is authorizing and no document secrecy and you see here when i asked them question them they became aggressive again aggressive attitude is again an indication of money laundering now so this is what money so we have related so now after this stage of placement what they will do they will bring that money and make investment with that and will that will become a legal money now so implications so one aspect we have discussed the other aspect they say i'm asking them he became aggressive all senior is saying that so now this matter should be reported to money mlro moreover they they should avoid excessive questioning the same person because it may tip him off 
It is again a crime. It is again a crime. It may tip him off. So you see here, the answer is given similar way. The circumstances described by the audit senior indicated that they may be using this company to carry out my offering. Now that's the cash based and ideal environment. Legitimizing the cash through accounts. So 2 million added to the gentleman from 5.5 5. 5 million to 3 point difference. It appears that 2 million have been added. So introduction stage placement. So he himself post. He is posting through the ledgers. And he is, so risk is heightened. He does not explain that. Same amount is wired internationally. Layering stage. And it is often done. So it occurs when after that integration. You just can see. Secrecy. He is hiding something. He is becoming excess, aggressive. Yes. Audit senior. He may, they may tip off if they keep questioning. So did not to explain tipping, tipping off, it's enough. So to what they should do, they should carefully. Yes, they are, they are to the league liability, legal liability exposure. Now, what do, to whom they should report? Audit senior to whom they should report? MLRO. First of all, they should consult Yes. From lawyer before reporting to MLRO, external body, they should, they should communicate to authorities, but, but they should have strong, strong base for that. And they should consult the legal advisor for that as well. So that's the end of this question. Now, there is another question with Sala company. Now, it is June 2018, question number two. It was tested, June 2018. Explain the importance of obtaining customer due diligence and recommend the information which should be obtained, eight marks. And recommend the information. So what should be obtained? Okay, so students, we, we have we have learned identification of the customer, right? So let us let us go through it so that we can have idea of specific because eight marks importance and recommend the information. So please read it by keeping this scenario in front of you. Read it. Question eight marks. Go through it, please. Analyze it and then I will solve it for you.
have you gone through it students yes have you gone through it yes you see here the question is eight marks students these questions are easy questions but let me tell you students unfortunately are unable to tackle these questions as well in the exam why they think they are easy they ignore it and the for the difficult question they are unable to tackle because they are difficult all the band they have not enough sufficient done sufficient practice right now here you are an audit manager in pointer and company a form of chartered certified accountant which offers a range of assurance services you are responsible for the audit of bizsala a company which provides approximately 10% of your firm's practice income each year now each year now students the finance director of visla has recently contacted you to provide information about another company setter company which is looking to appoint a provider of assurance services and extract from the email which the finance director of is has sent to you now one of my friend golden pots is the managing director of setter company a small company okay now which is looking to expand in the next few year i know that golden has approached the company's bank for finance of 6 million to fund the expansion to support this loan application golden needs to appoint a firm to appoint a limited assurance review on the company's financial statement he also want the appointed firm to provide tax planning advice okay i have asked you to contact you golden to contact and i hope the pointer will be able to provide these services at the store for a low fee if you are the fee you said is too high and unacceptable to golden and i will recommend the golden approach griffin company instead and i would also consider appointing griffin and company to provide the audit of his sala now you see here this is not related to the something which is related to this requirement okay so here it comes you have done some research on both setter store and golden pots and have confirmed that company is small enough to exempt to audit the company's owner managed with part with pots family owning 90% of share capital golden pot is a director and major short holder of the three other companies an article in newspaper company indicated that uh indicated that one of his companies was once fined for breach of employment law and that he had used money from one of the company's pension plan to set up a business abroad now you see here about this just you see here they say that identify the customer what information required using documents from reliable source confirm or shareholder you don't know the owners remember know the owners who owns the company who owns the 90% who owns the 10% identify beneficial owner now who is the beneficial owner sometimes it happens you know it happens a real owners they do not hold investment in their name they rather they hold in some other name so this is what is being said who is the beneficial owner they are beneficial owner now where a business relationship is to understand the purpose of the business relationship so you see it is the same almost which we studied copy pasted just linked with the scenario now so so you see here it is generic now they have linked it with the scenario over here linked it the scenario generic explanation okay now what is the because marks are high marks are high identity of the golden pots photographic evidence passport nic utility bills company certification of incorporation 
now so then now from the company's house confirmation company's house where the company is registered who is the beneficial owner voting rights all the companies at borden port or three companies so the details of other companies the reason for existence latest financial statements reviewed remember one thing please one thing where student do mistake what student mistake they write identity for passport of the person why to confirm identity they don't mention it purpose they they actually they forget to write purpose of that why they need it okay right certificate of incorporation why to confirm the status legal status of the company you see here company's house certificate information why who is the beneficial owners financial information so this the problem is here when you write only certificate of incorporation you will get 50% mark if you do not explain why do you need it you are getting it why purpose of information if you do not explain you won't get marks at all you won't got get marks at all yes if you do not explain the reason now next next so identify the source of funding for the company whether bank loan or that yes what are the source of funds so um, information about breach of compliance laws any laws okay whatever is available so in this way the information it will help us to identify the company what the company is and what is now students the time for starting the next area which is so we have done with this part from the syllabus we have done this you know a syllabus i wrote here yes we have done this part done now what we will be doing we will be starting from it audit of historical finance statement we will cover all this first because it is a major audit portion remember remember if you prepare this area on a regular basis it will help you in this area as well other assignment but if you do not prepare this you will face huge problem over here of course problem is here as well if you are not preparing it you are not preparing for exam what i observe that students usually put it at the end okay we are attending classes we are my way of teaching is that i give assignment on a regular basis and of course i do not check all the assignment i because it is not practic practical practicable of course to check all the assignment so i check a few assignments in the class on a sample basis and i give feedback identify mistakes if you will be doing that assignments let me tell you if you are doing if you will be doing those assignment on a regular basis i can give you guarantee that you can pass the paper in your first attempt if you are doing your assignment on a regular basis but if you do not do assignments please you will be at risk uh, my experience is that only 10 to 20% student do assignment this is my experience so far in you know let let me tell you in your passing the exam p7 pass exam if i say what will be the role you prepare knowledge of subject and conceptual clarity you are 35% prepare for your exam
you are 35 percent prepared remaining 65 percent is based on it what is that that is how to write answer if you do you know everything but if you do not write answer the way examiner wants unfortunately you will not pass the exam unfortunately and it is a bitter truth, truth. so from that day first i am telling you that you must of course this is base knowledge is base if you have knowledge then you can go for it but having knowledge is not enough not sufficient 35 percent marks normally they are covered by it and then above that from 35 to 100 it is all about answer drafting how much well worse you will be with that yeah you know a student recently sent me the private message and students telling that i focused only theoretical thing everything you know i know even students came to me after failing their p7 six times five times three student i you know in the last one year three times it happened five times and six times they failed their p7 and they came to me they say we are unable to go yeah and they are failing it in the 40s the reason is that answer drafting exactly a student is telling me story uh, his or her story in the chat box privately right now in your class similar happened with that student as well so so what i am saying you know that is based on my 10 year experience you know so please attention towards it yes very much important now so students <laughs> acceptance of oral engagement we will start with it but what i will be doing i'll be doing some of the topics today i will not go too far because this is today's first class and you will don't have notes as well okay so i will end class today 10 15 minutes earlier maybe more than uh, the before the time of class but in the next week when we'll be having routine class because majority of you are on trial today trial class today now so students acceptance of all it acceptance of audit so students whenever a, a company approaches the auditor to get its financial statements audited whenever a company approaches auditor so auditor does not accept the audit immediately first of all auditor identify issues if there are any if they are resolvable resolve and accept the audit if not resolvable simply decline the audit now so what when we talk about issues what are the issues what are the issues issues can be of two types one is just a minute please
Yes, please. I was talking about issues. Issues are of two types. One is auditor related issues. Client related issues. Auditor related issues. What can they be? Auditor need to check before accepting any audit whether auditor has is eligible to act for the same client as auditor or not, which, which has approved for audit. Eligible to act or not. Second is that, second is that auditor need to check that whether resources are available for audit or not for audit or not now what is meant by resources now resources means you know competence skill competence skill and enough team members staff sufficient staff available whether they are available or not if they are not available whether can auditor make it available so resolvable not resolvable then of course cannot accept audit so client related issues what they are client client screening is performed client screening screening yes due diligence which we discussed recently of client know your client whether it is a high risk client or low risk client whether we should accept audit or not you see here client screening information and you see here kyc procedures we have done that know your client kyc is know your client procedures obtain reference about client obtain reference references we say we'll provide you reference and we will try to verify those references we'll try to verify yes and the next is reference okay reference is just like that you know uh, i don't know you who can give you a guarantee who can who yeah, yes from where i get information about you tell me some persons some famous uh, in the society or some bank some businesses with whom you have dealt with with whom you have dealt with already tell tell me so it is like that okay so they will give us information about you now next so obtain references and verify and verify those references of course we will contact with them as an auditor and we will can verify those references you know the best thing is communication i am very you know this makes me very much happy when a person asks me question you know i i you know feel like that i am i am teaching someone really worthy in the class so some live class some alive class rather <laughs> okay so now the next is that is the third 
is that communicate with present or previous auditor means they have approached us for audit we are proposed audit so there might be a present auditor or previous auditor might be there I might be there a present auditor yes so so we should ask him that why you are leaving are there any issues because of which we should not accept the audit of this company which are approaching him which are approaching us so communication with the present or previous auditor because there might be some circumstances which the new auditor may not have idea and pre present auditor which is going to leave yes remember very much important being involved with the politically exposed person a company politicians political exposed person all politicians yes if they are directors so it is risky for auditor of course because they uh, are public figures and uh, risk is high you know very well to involve with the political for a business students so issues i have discussed already now once we have accept we have identified okay we are satisfied no issue at all we should accept audit now we sit with the company management okay let us decide terms and condition we decide terms and condition with them and we first of all verbally orally and then we put that all terms and condition in a letter which is called engagement letter okay so engagement letter is signed and now we are formally appointed as auditor so engagement letter is the letter which basically contains terms and conditions of audit now now we have been formally appointed as auditor previous auditor has been removed now as an auditor we must make sure that whatever the legal formality is which the relevant laws require may be company's law may be some other law that if an auditor is removed some notices have to be sent to certain parties if an auditor is appointed some notices have to be sent or any other legal formalities for regarding the removal of previous auditor and regarding new auditor all the notices should be should have been sent and all the valid legal process should be done so procedures after accepting appointment now and should and very important thing precondition auditor before doing of course that before proceeding further there are you know audit audit is a process which is dependent upon number of factors an auditor should check further first of all whether some pre circumstances they exist we are satisfied that the company is good they are good people but for audit we need something from the management there are some prerequisites which should be present over there so what we do pre conditions for audit pre conditions for audit now pre conditions so pre conditions are those condition if they are not present over there even we are satisfied client is good and management is good we still cannot accept audit what are two pre conditions one financial reporting framework for example in your country i know majority of you are from mauritius so in your country ifrs 
is financial reporting standards, which is acceptable by law. If a company is preparing IFR, not according to IFRS, auditor should not accept audit. Because the purpose, legal law requires financial statements as per IFRS, statutory audit. So if they are not using appropriate framework, we cannot accept the audit. Second, second, second. This is again very much important precondition. Management should agree with us that it is their responsibility. They can knowledge and understand. You know, this is very much important. Not only acknowledge, they understand that as well. Not only acknowledge that the, these three responsibilities, preparation of financial statement is their responsibility. Controls to implement, controls to prepare good financial statement is their responsibility. And they will provide auditor all access to all record of the company, unrestricted success. They will not disturb auditor at all. They will provide auditor unrestricted access to the record of the company. So that auditor can, they are record and even explanation of from the staff. Student, if they do not acknowledge it, again, because these are, these are requirements for audit. So these preconditions. Now, this contents of engagement letter is our last topic for today. Contents of engagement letter. Engagement letter, as I told you, that engagement letter is the letter which is basically tells the terms and conditions of audit. Terms and conditions. So there are some mandatory contents. These are mandatory. And these are optional. And of course, optional can be too much. So five items should be there, must. When auditor, auditor draft this letter, auditor sign, audit team member sign, senior audit partner, and some management person to make it a contract. So it tells objective and scope of audit. Why audit is being conducted? What are, whether it is a legal requirement and what are the scope means area of work, scope means area of work. So what are the areas to be audited? Now, what will be the auditor's responsibility? Explanation is given. What will be the management's responsibilities? You know, terms and conditions. What is the relevant financial reporting framework? And in our country, we know IFRS. And what they expect output of audit. They expect only audit report or some other reports as well. Sometimes it happens. Remember, in addition to these five elements, anything which management wants or which auditor wants, that can be included in the engagement letter. Anything which auditor wants or anything which management wants, it can be included in the engagement letter. Whatever they think. So, so contents of engagement letter. So additional matters, I said, you need not to memorize it. You just can't. For example, fee, when to pay, how audit will be performed? What will be the communications? At what time? You know, maybe there may be a list which may not be exhaustive. There may, there might be a long, long list. Okay. But you need to memorize these five points only now. Students, EY they got appointed as auditor of MCB in 2017, their auditor. They submitted engagement letter. They submitted in 2017, it was signed. 
and you know engagement letter it is signed by management person and auditor audit partner now in 2018 again mcb said them that audit us again audit our firm or company again so tell me should they submit an additional again a new engagement letter no the answer is no the same engagement letter can serve the purpose in 2019 in 2020 2021 same engagement letter can serve the purpose you need not to submit new engagement letter every year if you are working for the same company until unless certain circumstances arise until unless when engagement letter need to be revised what are those circumstances of course circumstances change i am going to discuss what are those circumstances when engagement letter has to be revised okay we are going to discuss fee is one of the factor of course you know i told you it is the terms and condition of audit if there is some if there is some sort of misunderstanding about the scope of audit about the roles and responsibilities then it need to be revised if they are going to revise terms just like that the student said bill billing you know fee okay you want to revise that so change the engagement letter yes i said you management sign and auditors if management of the company has been changed in 17 there were different persons now in 19 man senior management changed new engagement letter we know that these are the shareholders who appoint auditor if if significant ownership in 2017 the who appointed now they are no longer owner of in company in 19 rather new people are there so new engagement letter business size and work has changed it has grown so now same is not relevant because work scope has changed type of work is changed laws and regulation changed financial reporting framework changed or reports which are requ required from auditor they say now you should report on in controls as well now so then of course engagement letter has to be revised students uh now uh, that's the end of this chapter the first section our chapter uh, sorry the section accepting the audits now in the next class what we will be doing we will be starting audit planning and risk assessment let me tell you you know this is very important area minimum 24 marks in question number 1 so what i'll be doing in the next class i'll be discussing this area all this area and that will be conceptual knowledge so uh, i request you to go through this as well i will be sharing notes with the people who get enrolled with me uh, in during the week so our preferred communication way is whatsapp 33 66 44 44 plus 92 so i will be sharing the video recording of course with your people this session okay and i'll be sending you and we provide the video recording of all lectures to the students and we believe in professionalism and that we when we share our resources with you for your benefit that will not be uh, you know shared forward or forward to anyone else okay this is what we believe okay so it is a so otherwise we know if it happens so then uh, that will not be 
uh, that will hurt the relationship of trust. Okay. So now, any question from your side? Yes. Any question from your side, please. Feel free to ask. Yes, please. Anyone, any question? Yes. I appreciate if you communicate. Feel free to contact me via WhatsApp. I am telling you, you do not, you not, should not feel shy. Because this is our standard way to operate through, uh, you know, that to, we want to communicate more so that we can resolve issues timely. We can prepare the subject in a better way. You know, more communication means more clarity on the things. Is it okay, students? Is it clear? Okay. So tell me, please. Yes, communication is key. So, yes or no? You got my point? You know, you can ask Shane, you can ask this question uh, me via WhatsApp. Okay, I will respond over there. Okay, so that's it for today. See you on the next Saturday. Okay, take care. Goodbye. Goodbye.